Hey, Globy. You look a little two-dimensional today. Did you know that a few hundred years ago, people actually thought you were flat? After all, they could look out under the horizon and things looked flat as far as humans could see. Sailors even had the false belief that if they kept sailing in a straight line, they would eventually fall off the earth. Of course, today we know you're not flat. You're a sphere. Did you also know, Globy, that people once thought you were the center of the solar system? That's right. They thought the sun and the other planets in our solar system revolved around the Earth. In fact, they thought everything in the universe revolved around Earth. But in 1543, an astronomer named Copernicus claimed the sun was the center of our solar system. But not many people thought he was right. They held strong to their mistaken beliefs. Then, another astronomer named Galileo proved the Earth was not the center of our solar system. He used his telescope to observe that Venus had different phases, like our moon. For example, sometimes the moon is full in the sky, and sometimes it's just a sliver. This is caused by the moon's orbit around our Earth, as well as our planet's orbit around the sun. We know that the moon does not make its own light. It can only reflect light from the sun. The sun lights one half of the moon. The other half is always dark. During the moon's orbits around Earth, we see different fractions of the lighted half, so the moon appears to change shape. We call these changes phases of the moon. The time from one phase of the moon until the next time the moon reaches the same phase is 29.5 days. Galileo correctly assumed that since Venus also displayed different phases like our moon, then it must mean that Venus was orbiting the sun and not the Earth. This was his hypothesis, and today we know that he was right. But at the time, many leaders thought Galileo was outright crazy. In fact, they charged him with a crime for his beliefs and sentenced him to house arrest for the remainder of his life. Can you imagine that? Let's talk about the word hypothesis for a moment. A hypothesis is a statement that can be tested using the scientific method. That basically means that a hypothesis is someone's idea that hasn't yet been proven right or wrong. When scientists are using the scientific method, they are making observations, asking questions, and looking for possible explanations for what they see. They form a hypothesis and then test that hypothesis. And that's one of the exciting things about science. At its very basic level, science is about the search for truth. Scientists and astronomers develop ideas about the universe and then set out to prove that what they believe is right. Sometimes, though, scientists prove the hypothesis is wrong, and that forces them to revise and change their ideas. Even a hypothesis that is right can lead to new questions, and the process begins all over again. On Earth, our hypotheses change all the time. Less than 100 years ago, we had no idea that microbes caused disease. If you think of the stories of yellow fever, it was the hot air. It was miasma, it was the bad air coming off the river. You know, and when it got cold, people wouldn't be sick anymore. This outbreak would end. But nobody really knew that, oh, it's a mosquito. It's this critter that's carrying this microbe that is biting you, getting in your bloodstream. This is what's making people sick. So that's an idea, the hypothesis of the miasma off the river or the vapors coming out of vents or, or whatever were the leading theories of what was causing yellow fever 100 years ago. We know now that simply it's a microbe. And you can solve it. You can fix it. You can say, let's start developing a vaccine because we know what, what this mechanism is now. Let's eradicate mosquitoes so people don't get bitten. So you can take precautions and you can have solutions when you start turning over hypotheses and, and coming up with an idea of how things really work. The planet Mars is another example of where scientists have revised their ideas. Many astronomers who had gazed at Mars through their telescopes believed the planet had liquid water because they observed both dark and light patches on its surface. They thought the dark patches were water and the light patches were continents. But in 1965, NASA sent the Mariner 4 to fly by the planet and take photographs. The Mariner 4 captured the first pictures of another planet taken from deep space. It was during this mission that scientists realized there was no liquid water on the surface of Mars. But had there ever been? Some scientists believed there had been, some did not. In 2008, NASA sent the Phoenix lander to Mars. During its mission, the robotic arm of the Phoenix lander dug just below the surface of Mars and discovered frozen water, ice. The Phoenix lander has also discovered that the soil of Mars was different than they originally thought. 
So Globy, these are just a few examples of changing ideas. And with all we've learned today, I'm going to make a hypothesis of my own. If new discoveries are made in the next decade, scientists will continue to revise and change their beliefs. It's a very exciting process, and one that helps us discover the truth about our world and our universe. Thank you.